So I will be talking about how you can use GEM5 using WA and DevLib. Um, so as I said, I worked with GEM5 during my PhD and now, and I think these tools are actually quite useful to help you to interact with GEM5. Um, so basically there are multiple methods that you can use to run GEM5. Um, <clears throat> you can run GEM5 standalone, which means that you interact with it using terminals and scripts, and that's also how you set it up. It's an easy setup, which of course always with caveat with GEM5 easies. There's no such thing as easy in GEM5. Um, but it's rather inflexible because once you do the setup, it doesn't change, and it's rather hard to share your workflow and your results with people. Um, so then you have DevLib. DevLib is a device abstraction layer which will allow you to interact with GEM5 using Python. So it allows you to set up GEM5 in Python and then interact with it via uh, Python. The advantage of this is that it's platform agnostic. You interact in the same way with GEM5 as you would with a normal Linux device. And it's because you can use Python, you can now create Python notebooks that you can share with people so you can share what you're actually doing. The disadvantage is that you require some extra setup. You need to do some extra steps to get DevLib to work. Uh, and then there's work workload automation. Uh, workload automation is an existing framework that's used to run uh, workloads on ARM devices, and GEM5 is seen now seen as an ARM device, so you can automatically run workloads uh, on GEM5. Again, platform agnostics. Another advantage is that there's already workloads in it, so that you have the binaries for certain workloads. And you, workload automation is configured using agendas, so now you can share those agendas and then you know exactly what somebody else is doing. The disadvantage is the initial setup. Again, you need to do some extra steps. Um, but both DevLib and WA can be found on the ARM software GitHub and they're open source. So again, if you uh, do something interesting, please contribute it back. Uh, so basically, if you run Gem5 standalone, you have, as you as a user, need to make some, um, this like, to configure, you use a command line and the default configuration ship script, and that combines into a set of choices, and those choices will determine the architecture they are actually running. Like, for example, how many cores are you running, how are you connecting them, uh, the level of detail. Um, I'm not gonna go over the details, but again, you can find it on the GEM5 wiki to see what you need to do exactly. So how DevLib works is, uh, as a user, you create a configuration in Python, and then the DevLib framework will, ex will look at what is in that configuration and set up a Gem5 simulated system for you. So it will start the simulation for you. And then it will try to start, once the simulation is running, it will try to hook into the simulation. And from that moment on, you can, in you can interact with Gem5 using what is seen as a generalized connection, but on the inside, it's again a Telnet connection. Um, and then the interesting thing again is that you have a transport port in the connection as well, and that allows you to, at runtime, run uh, push workloads onto Gem5. Um, and this altogether is called, in DevLib terminology, the target. Um, but so the nice thing here is that it's very generalized. The way you interact with a Gem5 target is the same way you would interact with a real Linux computer. Um, and then again, at the end of a simulation, you extract your results from the stats file, or you can see at runtime what comes out of the connection. So how you use it, this is an example of um, how you configure it. So first of all, you create a platform where you tell it, this is the, the stats there, that's the output directory I want you to store things in. I want you to use the gem, that gem5 binary. Um, I want you to use these arguments. So this is very short because it's just the example script, but you can add all the arguments you want there. Um, and then some other arguments for Vertio. And then using the platform, the platform is basically just a little dictionary with all the information in it. Using that, you create a target saying like, I want a Linux target to which you connect using a Gem5 connection, and this is the information about the platform. And then you do the setup. Doing setup, basically the simulation is started, and um, some default binaries are pushed onto Gem5, like BusyBox, which is quite useful. And then once the simulation is set up, you can now execute normal commands. So for example, t execute LSL, you just run LSL. Uh, you can also execute the M5 commands. So M5 is the, gem, like it's, it does a bit like, um, say, gem5 housekeeping. So you can say, I want, in this case, I want you to dump all the statistics right now. And then the last thing is the pull and push files. That's quite nice. So here you say, I want you to pull this file in the gem5 system and pull it to the destination on the host. Um, 
The interesting thing is there are mo mo many more commands like how to install binaries, and for example, the install binary command will push the file for you, will check that it's there, will then make it executable and check all these things. Um, and then at the end of simulation, you nicely disconnect and it will do M5 exit for you, round everything off so you have um, a nicely ended simulation. Um, there's also some added functionality. So you have modules. Modules basically extend your target with extra functionality. For example, you have CPU Freak. If you add the CPU Freak module to your Gem5 target, that means that you can now change, you can now play with the frequency at runtime and you can change the governors of the CPUs. Then there is another one called Gem5 Stats, which allows you to read statistics at runtime while the simulation is still running. You can see what comes out. And then you have instruments, which is, as the name implies, allows you to read, like collect measurements from the target and runtime. There is one I haven't used it myself yet, but it's called Gem5 Power, and it sets and resets statistics up and allows you to extract certain power-related statistics. Now, then WA works slightly different. Again, the same concept, but slightly different. So in the case of WA, you create a YAML agenda. YAML is basically a language it's basically just a configuration script. I'll show an example on the next page. Um, based upon what is in the GEML agenda, the WA framework will create the GEM5 setup again for you, choosing all the setups. But the interesting thing is that once you created the YAML agenda, you don't interact with GEM5 anymore. WA will do everything for you. So based upon what's in the agenda, the WA framework will set up GEM5. And then based upon, again, what's in the YAML agenda, it will extract workloads from its own, from WA, and push them onto Gem5. Um, and it will keep on repeating things as well, because in, in WA you have the possibility to say, I, wanna, I want you to run this workload five times, and WA will do that all for you. It will start the simulation five times. Um, and at the end of the run, again, you can extract results from the stats file, but the nice thing as well is that WA will report for you whether or not a workload ran correctly. And it will give you, for example, in the, uh, in the case of drystone, it will give you DMIPS for every run. Um, so this is an example of an agenda. So you have the configuration. So at the top, what is this? Well, anyway, at the top you have the configuration where you say, I want to have a Gem5 Linux device. Um, then you give, you can say whether you want to start from a checkpoint. You can give the Gem5 arguments, which are exactly the normal Gem5 arguments you would give on the command line. Um, you can say which Gem5 binary you want to use. You can pass arguments for Gem5 um, for a And then the, you can also say whether or not you want to override the default M5 binary, which is already on your disk. So sometimes you want to make changes and override. And then the last part is workloads. So that's where you say which workloads you want to run. So in this case, you want to run memcopy. You, you can also give runtime parameters saying like how you want to say the governors, for example. Um, and then, then there's the workload param. So those are the parameters you pass onto the workloads. In this case, I want you to transfer a 64K buffer 100,000 times. And then at the end, the iteration says, I want you to run the memcopy workload 10 times. So the nice thing as well is you can give a global, uh, you can add more workloads to this list. So for example, you could say after this, I want you to run LM Bench, and then say overall, I want you to repeat this 10 times. So it, it does all this for you. Um, so that's basically the most important thing about WA, uh, because repetition is quite important in Gem5, which is something you can read in that paper why it's important to repeat, um, work, uh, repeat simulations a couple of times. And so you can do, you can run the same, the, the workload a couple of times, and that's called local iteration. You can run multiple workloads consecutively, and then you can choose, run all of this multiple times, so global iterations. Some workloads are already included. For example, the case, the ones you can run on Gem5, in, uh, Linux Gem5 or Dry, so memcopy. Um, you can also add your own, own ones to it. And then modules and instrumentation is the same concept as in DevLib. Um, so these, yeah, that's W and DevLib. One thing I struggle sometimes with, you need to definitely make sure that the binary you're pushing onto the system matches the system you're simulating. Mm -hmm. um, because in theory, Gem5 should be able, a 64-bit Gem5 should be able to handle a 32-bit binary, but that's not the case, so always make sure that they match. And again, it's open source, so if you add something, please contribute it back to the ARM software at GitHub. Uh, so as a summary, basically, when, what do you choose when? If you want to have a one-off interaction with Gem5, 
which again doesn't really exist, then you just use Gen5 because it's not worth setting up WA and develop in that case. If you want to have workloads which are ready for you to use, use WA. If you want to be able to really interact with Gem5 at runtime, you should use standalone Gem5 or DevLib. Uh, if you want to be able to repeat workloads, use WA. And if you want to be able to change your run at runtime by pushing and pulling files, use WA and DevLib. Thank you very much. Uh, if there's any questions or...